next topic is reinforcement learning problem characteristics so we will see some of the problems that is faced in an reinforced learning so first problem is delay reward or you can say that delayed reward the task of the agent is to learn a target function here as i told as per our control policy that is pi of s mapped to a we can say that pi is called as a target function so the task of the agent here is to learn the target function that is nothing but the pi that maps from the current state that is an yes to an action a so that we will get the action a it is equals to pi of s pi that is a target function it is mapped to an a state current state so action a it is equals to pi of s so we say that so we say that the target function pi it maps from the current state that is yes in order to make an action a so that's why it is written here a equal to pi of s but we have studied in our earlier chapters that we have assumed we have always assumed that when learning some target function that is such as pi we can consider each training example it will be represented in the form of an a pair that is called as an ordered pair correct so in all the previous chapter we have studied like in an artificial neural network like while explaining the gradient descent algorithm i have already told the output or the target function it is represented in the form of an ordered pair right so it was represented in the form of a pair like this s it is nothing but a state and pi of s it is nothing but the action that is being performed whereas in a reinforcement learning the training information it is not available to the machine instead of the train instead of that the trainer here provides only a sequence of immediate reward immediate reward values so what is meant by a reward value i have already explained what is a reward and what is a reward value a reward it is nothing but an output or an it is an outcome of the action that is being performed by an agent depending upon the state in an environment so that is known as a reward suppose if i consider the reward value then if i if i say that an example the game is won with plus 100 points then plus it is considered as a reward and 100 points it is considered as a reward value correct the same way if it is a, a minus 100 means it is an a penalty or the punishment and 100 is called as again the reward value so therefore whereas in our previous chapters or in the previous lessons we have studied that there was a training examples so which an a machine used to refer now here there are no training examples instead of that the trainer or who is designing an algorithm provides a sequence of immediate reward values as the agent executes the sequence of actions so but there occurs some problem called as an a temporal credit assignment a temporal credit assignment it determines which of the actions in its sequence are to be credited suppose we say that some of the actions are performed very fast as per the changes in the state uh, but the credit assignment or the reward is not assigned to it and now it is difficult for a machine or an uh, model to decide that like which one to reward first correct that decision it is known as temporal credit assignment so this one problems that is faced in a reinforcement machine learning that is called as a rare temporal credit assignment in a temporal credit assignment it determines which of the action in the sequence are to be credited since all the actions are been performed according to the changes in the state very faster so this is the first problem that is called as a delayed reward next problem is exploration we know that the in reinforcement learning the agent influences the distribution of a training example by the action sequences it chooses so now there is a trade off between the exploration of unknown states and action exploration of an unknown states and action means that in order to gather the new information or the exploitation of a states and action that is already learned will yield high reward that is in order to maximize the cumulative reward in the sense there is always a trade off 
between whether to choose the new information or the information that has already been chosen and the action has been performed on that information and in order to get the or to maximize the reward. So thus there is a trade-off. So this trade-off creates a problem in reinforcement learning. So that is a second problem in a reinforcement learning. Understand? In a reinforcement learning, we know that the agent influences the distribution of a training examples. How the training examples are distributed by the action. Based upon the action, it is going to choose. So thus, there arises the question in choosing the strategy. That is, there is a trade-off in choosing whether we must consider the new information first or the new state first or the state already been executed and the reward and waiting for the cumulative reward or in order to maximize the cumulative reward that is known as exploration. Next, third problem. Third problem is partially observable states. So this could be explained by considering an example. So for example, if you consider a robot with a forward pointing camera, the forward pointing camera, it can just see the or you can say that a front camera, what it does, it just sees the front view, but it can't see the behind it or behind the camera what is happening, the robot can't see. So in such cases, how we can tackle this problem is, so it is necessary for an agent to consider the previous observations together with the current sensor data when choosing the action or when performing the action. So in such a case, whenever there is an, a camera that observes only the front view that could not observe the behind view, in such a case, the agent is going to consider the previous observations that has been made along with the current data that has been present and performs the action accordingly. So this is known as partially available states. So this is a problem in partially available states. That is, in a partially available state, the entire state of the environment at each step is not covered. Only a part of the state of the environment is covered because this is explained by considering an example. Next is lifelong learning. Lifelong learning. So what is meant by this lifelong learning? We know that suppose if I consider an example of a robot, robot learning, so the robot must learn several related tasks within the same environment. See, if a robot is present, it is going to perform most of the things in the same environment. Suppose if I consider your autonomous car, so it has to take the deviation, it has to turn right, it has to turn left, it has to move straight. If there is a hump, brake must be applied. All these actions must be performed in a single environment. And your car, that is your autonomous car, must learn it. And this process, it is a continuous learning process that is explained here. So you can also explain by considering an example of a robot. So the robot here must learn several related tasks within the same environment. For example, a mobile robot may need to learn how to dock down on its battery charger. A mobile robot, if you have, it must know how to perform charging of your mobile phone, how to navigate through the corridors, how to pick up the output from laser printer. So all these things are example and your robot must perform this task. So this experience or knowledge, it reduces the difficulty in learning the new task. So if you, if the, see if a robot is performing all these tasks, means a multiple task if it is doing, then it becomes easy for it to learn a new task. So that is the meaning of lifelong learning. So let's revise it again. So this topic, it carries for six marks. So it is an what are the problems that a reinforce learning, reinforcement learning it is going to face? So that is reinforcement learning problem characteristics. So first is delay reward or delayed reward. So what is meant by this delayed reward? So we know this always whenever the task it has been performed or whenever an action is performed by an agent, immediately the reward should, must be given right but the reward it is not given immediately instead there is a delay in reward that is called as a temporal credit assignment so what is meant by a temporal credit assignment is so since 
the action that is performed by the agent it is so much fast and the reward is not been provided to it sequentially in the such a case there occurs a problem called as temporal credit assignment next exploration in an exploration here the agent influences the distribution of an training examples based upon the action that is being performed there's there is a trade off between an whether to choose a new information or whether to choose a new state or whether to consider the previously performed state and to maximize the reward so that is an exploration next is partially available states so this could be explained by considering an example here we are considering an a camera suppose you have a front camera it can see only the front view it can't see the behind view so that's why what the agent does it it considers the previously observed data along with the current data and then he is going to perform the action next is lifelong learning so your robot or your autonomous car or whatever who is the agent that is there must work within the environment for several tasks in the sense it must perform multiple tasks so that is known as lifelong learning when this is done then it is then it becomes very easy to learn the new task so these are the problems characteristics in reinforcement learning